Hello, my name is Augusto Gonçalves and I work for the Developer Technical Services Group at Autodesk based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Welcome to this presentation where I will present an introduction to programming the Revit.NET API. Here is a quick meet the presenter slide. Next time we see each other at a conference or meeting, come up to chat. I'm always glad to meet developers. There are three versions of Revit, Architecture, Structured and MAP. I'm assuming you know how to use Revit product and the main difference of these versions. Most of the API is shared across all versions, but there are some specific features available only if you are running the specific product. The API was written in .NET and you can use it from any .NET programming language. Here we will use the C Sharp. The SDK, Software Development Kit, contains very interesting information. If you don't have it yet, I strongly recommend that you download it from autodesk.com slash developer. Once you download it, you should definitely take a look at the developer's guide, which is a book-style tutorial about the API. The API reference, which contains a list of all API classes available, and the samples folder, which contains several samples. We recommend that you look at the following samples Revit Commons, Fire Hating, Viewers, Element Viewer, Create Beams, Columns, Braces. Now let's make a quick start creating a classic Relo World sample. Here we will be able to configure the development environment and edit the Revit.ini file. Now switching to Visual Studio, let's create a new project. We will choose the language Visual C Sharp and the project type class library. Let's change the name Revit Dev TV. OK. The first step is to add reference to Revit API.dll. So we can go to References, Add Reference, and browse for it. See, Program Files, Autodesk, Revit Architecture 2010, Program, Revit API.dll. We also want to add reference to system.windows.forms to show some message box on the screen. If you, you are using vb.net, you may don't need to add this reference because you can use the message box method. So add reference.net system.windows.forms. OK. It's also important to set this reference as copy local equals files, so you can go to properties and select copy local equals files. Now go back to solution. We also will change this class one name to something more convenient. We change it for ads key commands. This, this is just recommended. It's not required. Now at the code, we will add one more important namespace using autodesk.revit. Now each class on Revit must implement the e-external command interface in order to implement a external command. So we can add a e-external command interface here. We can also implement an e-external application to implement uh, applications in Revit, but we, we use just a command. We have an option here at this small blue square, and we can choose implement interface e-external command. This will add some codes. We can safely remove this one. This is just for formatting, and also this one. And as we are going to implement this method now, we can remove this exception from here. Just to improve the visual, I will put some new lines here. Okay. Now we are just going to make a hello world from Revit. So let's just show a message box system dot windows dot forms dot message box dot show 
and our message hello world so very simple now every command in Revit must return a re, uh, result value so now let's just return succeeded return e external command dot result dot succeeded we are assuming that this command will run ok now to make this command run let's set, set up the Revit program as the external command to start so go to properties go to the bug and select start external program and we will type program files autodesk Revit 2010 program Revit.exe. Okay, now our code is compiling. Okay, let's try it. Okay, succeeded. To make our code run inside Revit, we must add this assembly here to the Revit.ini file. So I will go to this file here, recent files. I have it on my recent list. This file is under Revit program folder and I will add a few lines here I have a external command the number of commands I will, I'm adding the command number one and note that if you already have commands defined inside revit.ini you must do not create two external commands tags so if you already have one you will probably have to increase this counting number and in include your new command here using the appropriate index and I have a name that will appear at the menu the class name Revit Dev TV which is the namespace and the ADS key commands which is the class name I also have the assembly location here is the DLL location and finally a description. Let's save this file and start Revit. Inside Revit, now we have a new Rebo tab called Add-ins. And I can go to External Tools and select my command, My Hello World from Revit. Note that here I have the description ADN Dev TV for Revit API. Just click and show our message. Moving forward, during development time, you can save yourself a lot of time using the Add-in Manager for Revit 2. This tool is available as part of the SDK and allow you to easily edit the Revit.ini file by selecting the assemblies and the external command you want to run, and even run an external command without adding the ini file, meaning without need to restart Revit, which is very good. We will not demonstrate how to use it here, but you should definitely use it on your development. Any external command receives one input, command data, and two outputs, message and elements. The command data allow access to all data we may need. There are two main properties, application and view. The first contains the active document with useful methods and properties, such as elements and selection properties, and the geometric and family related methods. The second view contains graphic and textual information, such as plan and schedules, Bottom line, we will use the command data in virtually all commands. If the command return failed, then Revit will display the message parameter with the elements appended to the element